I want to help you picture how DAX works so that you can then write your own DAX formulas. I did another video, which I'll put a link to, which will appear up here, just introducing DAX as a concept. And you may want to go and watch that video now or watch it after this. Okay, let's go. So DAX is the formula language you use for writing formulas in Power BI or in the Excel data model. It stands for Data Analysis Expressions. And it doesn't really work in the same way that Excel formula works. And I want to give you a way of just picturing how it does work and how it contrasts with Excel and what the familiarities are to really set you up for then writing your own DAX formulas going forward. So I'm going to start off in Excel and I'm going to move to Power BI. So here we have a little table um, and the old, or the still the way of adding up cells in Excel, the old sum formula, so equals sum, and you start highlighting what you want to add up. It's really intuitive, it's so simple, it makes sense. Okay, that's not how DAX formulas work. DAX formulas refer to tables and columns of tables, not individual cells. There's no concept of the individual cell as such. So it's much more like when you try and add up a whole column in a table. So this is an Excel table. And if I sum the whole column, I get this, the table name, and then in square brackets, the column name, press enter, and that's the grand total of that table, okay? Sum, table name, column name. They developed DAX formulas to look very much like this. So let's see DAX in action. In order to do a DAX formula, you need a data model. Um, so let's load this table into the Excel data model. I'm going to do that via data and then from table slash range. In newer versions of Excel, it says from sheet. So that table is now going to be loaded into the data model using Power Query. Okay, so close and load to. So Power Query is now going to load the data into the data model. And I click OK. Now, what I'd like to do actually is just to make it really distinct, I'm going to rename this data model table. So I'm just going to call it sales data. It says, do you want to rename? And I'm just going to refresh it to make sure that all works. Okay, so the data model is now loaded. Um, if you need to find the data model, you go to the data tab and it's under the manage data model button, which is this green button. Once you click that, it loads an add-in called Power Pivot and you click on manage and you can see all your data. Also, you can write your DAX formulas, which are called measures here. Okay, new measure. Or the way we'll do it now, is I'm just going to go to an empty sheet. I am going to insert a pivot table. And you can see it says, use this workbook's data model. Perfect. And I click OK. And I've now got a pivot table ready for me to use. So I'm just going to close this helper window, drag this pivot table box over here so we can see it. And here is the sales table with the little orange blob. Right, so this is the data model data. And I just want to put console in the rows. Okay, now I could simply drag number of units into the values box, but that's not best practice. And you are really limiting yourself if you start write, writing sort of calculations that way. You really want to use measures, DAX, formulas. So what do I want to do? I want to work out the number of units sold for PS4, for Switch, for the Wii. And the way DAX works is essentially it will filter, and if I open this up, if I filter this for the Switch, for example, okay, 
it will add those three columns. I just want to sum this column after filtering for the switch. Then I want to sum this column after filtering for the PS3. Then I want to filter it by the Xbox. And you get a different sum each time, okay? This is the way DAX works. It's all about filtering. So let's write a measure. So I can come over across here, right click, add measure. And this box pops up. I'll just call it units. And this is where DAX is different to Excel. You don't physically go and select any cells. You actually just have to freehand it. So I just want to take the sum of the sales, and here I can see the number of units column from the sales data table. Let me just zoom in there, put a bracket on the end. You see how similar that is to the, the column formula that we did earlier? I'm going to make it a number thousand separator and click OK. So here is my measure with a little FX next to it. And I can put that in the values box and then it's working it out. It is filtering the table for PS4 and then the measure, remember the measure here? It's simply the sum of the number of units column after it's been filtered. That's the key. Let's do, an, let's do another one. So right click, add measure. This time, number of orders. And we're just gonna say every row is an individual order. So the formula is, equals count rows from the sales data table. Okay, and DAX isn't particularly case sensitive. Really, I should write that properly, but you get the idea. I can even click the check DAX formula button. It says no errors. Okay, let's click okay. And here's number of orders. And I can give that a tick. And there's my number of orders. So after we filter the table for switch, we get three rows. So this is the concept, okay? And now the beauty of these named formulas is they can reference each other. So I could even do this, add a measure, and I could do um, average units per order. Okay, and it's simply the number of units, sorry, the units measure, divided by okay, the number of orders. See how you're referring to existing formulas and reusing them? And there's other ways of doing this, and there's the divide function, which is a topic for another time. But you see how you can build these up? Okay, let me just do that. Number, thousand separator. I'll go to one decimal for this one. Okay, and then I can tick that. And there we go. But the beauty of DAX is this. I can now do average units per order for anything. So I don't even need um, these two measures in there for it to work. And I can swap out console and I could put supplier in instead. This is the power of DAX, reusable formulas. Okay, let's jump over to Power BI and take a look. I've already loaded the data into Power BI. So I went get data from Excel workbook and brought that sales table in. And I brought a couple of other little tables in as well, just for the exercise. And they're listed down here. And I've pre-built my measures. So you can add a measure, same way as you do in a pivot table in Excel. You right click and you say new measure. And the difference is this formula bar pops up here and you write your measure in there, okay? I've actually put my measures in a little measures table. So I've done the units already, and I've done the number of orders. What can we do now? Well, if I bring in, let's say my um, calendar, and I bring in month, so here's my months, Jan, Feb, March, and I bring in my units. Ah, oh, 
I get the same number over and over again. Why is that? Well, the reason is, going back to that part with the filter that I used in Excel, is that the filter here isn't working. Okay, so I've got January coming from my calendar table, and my calculation is adding up the number of units from the sales table. So there's no filter on the sales table. There's no filter being applied for January because the filter is coming from the calendar table. Okay, this is where the data model comes in, this diagram view. So here we can take our order date and we hook it up to our calendar date. And there is now a relationship for the filter to work with. So now if I filter for January, all the dates for January trickle down this line and filter this sales table for all the sales in January. So now when I go back here, I've got 35. So this is the concept of how DAX formulas then present the result. The formula itself is simply the sum of a column. That's it. The clever part is it calculates after filters have been applied. So in this case, the filter is January from the calendar table. And if I come over here to my calendar and I filter this for the month of January, and I've only got one year's worth of data here. So it's those 31 days. So these dates trickle down this line and filter this table. Now, for those of you who are really into this DAX business, you'd be screaming going, that's not really how it works. I know that. But for most people, just to get their heads around how this works, this concept is good enough. Okay, It's certainly good enough for me to help me understand how this works. Right. So these 31 days in the calendar go down to the sales table. And here's the sales table. And they filter this table for all the days in January. Okay, which is essentially those three. Those are the three. And when you add them up, you get 35. And if I go back to my report view, that's how I get 35. So filter first and then sum. The same thing would happen if I put in number of orders. Okay, If I drag this across a bit, the number of orders, all the formula is count rows in the sales table. So after we filter for all the days in January, there's three matches, there's three rows. Okay, right. So let's then take this one step further with the total year to date function. So I'm going to right click and say new measure. And I'll say units sold YTD equals. So I'm writing a DAX function called total YTD, which is a clever function that can change the filter. Whenever you see expression, generally think what measure do you drop in there? So square bracket, it's the units. That's the uh, thing I want to add up. Comma, whenever you see dates, you give it your calendar date. So that's the column of uh, dates, whatever your date table is called. Some people prefer date for their date table. Um, again, go and watch that little video about calendars that I did. And essentially for a year starting the 1st of January, that is it. So we close the bracket and press enter. Okay, and if I make this visual a bit wider and I tick this measure, we've now got a running total. And the thing to understand is that ultimately this measure is just working out units, which is simply the sum of the number of units, okay, the sum of the column. We're just filtering it in a different way to get this 75 compared to this 40. So the total year-to-date function, the DAX 
formula can change the filter. And this is where your learning in DAX then steps into the next level. DAX formulas can change filters, they can add filters, they can override filters. Power BI is all about filters. Everything's a filter. Other visuals are filters. There's filter panels, there's slices. There's so many different filters. If something's not working, there's something wrong with your filter in your formula, how your formula is being impacted. So let's focus on this figure for March. We are saying filter for March. So we go back here to our diagram view and our calendar. And we say, okay, we are filtering for all the months in all the days in March. The total year to date function says, ah, I'm a clever function. I'm going to do something different with your calendar date column. Not only am I going to filter for March, I'm going to unfilter as far back as the 1st of January. So now all the dates from the 1st of January to the end of March trickle down this line and filter this table. So you've got way more dates filtering this table. So not only you've got January, you've now got all the February dates and all the March dates. Okay, And when you add all those up, you get the grand total of 90. That's how it works. So to understand DAX and to start off with DAX and get your head around this concept of what formulas are doing, you need to understand this concept of columns being summed or tables being counted or columns that get the max or the minimum and then picture conceptually how those columns are being filtered by visual level filters or playing about with them using filter modifiers inside your DAX formula. That is a very brief conceptual beginning to how to picture that DAX formulas are working. I hope you find it useful. Let me know. Love to have your comments on whether this sort of thing is useful. Is it too basic? Does it help um, get your head around how DAX is starting to work? Um, please subscribe. More importantly, let people know about this channel. If you find it useful, somebody else will. So please share and I will catch you later.